<clears throat> All right, in three, two, one. Boom. All right, so how much does this tank cost, man? Uh, this one? This one right here. How much does it cost to produce? This is the subject of today. And I mean, not just this one, but. Not just this one. I'm asking the community right now. How much do you guys think you could recreate this for? Is this an expensive hobby Woo. where if you don't have infinite dollars, you can't be successful? We're I'm, gonna find out today. I'm gonna say no. No. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna let it out right now. Boom. All right. Let's do it. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> All right. I didn't miss today. No, good mm -hmm. job. All right. Somebody's so, there, though. I had a friend of mine today. Uh, so we're talking today. Is this an expensive hobby? Is it uh, too expensive? Has it gotten more expensive than it used to be? Yeah. And how do we make it cheaper in the long run here? Mm. Uh, how do we change the trajectory of that? We're gonna hit all that stuff today. Now, I talked to a friend of mine today. Okay. And the first thing he said was, dude, why are you going to talk about this? It's taboo. People in the industry don't talk about price. The, the price it's and the, how insane <laughs> expensive this hobby it's is. It's the meme that you always see come across the forums and the groups. When I die, don't don't try to don't uh, hope my wife doesn't try to sell these for what I uh, told her I bought them for and call that kind of crap. So, yeah, uh, it's one of those things you just don't talk about. And even the 160, uh, we never oh. did talk about because so many all the questions that rolled in were. Well, how much does it cost to build out it. that exact system? How much? Yeah. I don't want to tack it up. It's also the source of like the most, like the biggest flame wars on the mm. communities and the forums and stuff. It's pa like cost. Everybody arguing with each other of what are the costs. I can do it. And There's two camps. I can do it super cheap and the DIY and then all this other cheap stuff and then the other game. All you're expensive. Cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to do it right. I, it's all garbage. So today, man, we're going to get into it. And the reason, actually, I find this out almost universally. Yeah. When anybody I trust says, dude, why are you going to talk about that's going to be a train wreck? I'm like, I know we're on to it. We're, that's going to be a good one. That, 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 that's <laughs> the one I want to talk about bear. more than anything All else. Right. Okay. All right. So also, like, I intentionally asked uh, Dave, man, to throw up my own tank uh, system down as the thumbnail in today's video because it was ungodly expensive to create all of that stuff. So this is, is like that gonna really, make your Is that going to make your tank better? I just want to throw myself under the bus right in this conversation. <laughs> like, does it have to I need all that garbage to be able to be successful? And the answer is no. But some of you might want. Yeah. You know? So the yeah. answer is we'll find out. All right. So. We got a few things that we're going to hit on today. One, I asked, uh, we don't know each other's answers and stuff here yet, mm -hmm. so it would be really interesting to find out. But I asked uh, both of us to come up with a direct answer to the question, does it need to be expensive, mm. right? The next one is, was it uh, different in 2014 when you started, mm -hmm. which is like eight years ago, uh, or seven years ago? Seven, eight, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'll answer if it was different in 2004 which is like forever ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm a dinosaur <laughs> now. Uh, why is it so expensive today? And if it doesn't have, to, finally, does it have to be that way? Can, can we, we change Can it? we make it cheaper? I got more notes on this one that I spent all morning on than maybe any other topic <laughs> we've ever done. So hopefully we'll get it all out. All right. So I'm gonna let you go first. Direct answer, does it need to be expensive? Is this an expensive person, a rich person's hobby? Mm. Will you not be successful unless you dump money in it? Uh, my answer is no, it doesn't need to be expensive. Especially given, okay, and I've got, you know, there's one reason why I don't think it needs to be expensive and, and it's kind of reflected in all of my topics here that we're gonna talk about, but uh, it's, the, it's the, the acquisition of knowledge and then uh, implementing that knowledge. So, you know, as you as you grow your knowledge in the hobby as i've grown my knowledge in the hobby i understand what the different equipment's for how to use it how to tune it how it's going to help my system i can pick and choose which uh equipment and gear is actually necessary for my style of reefing and i can make smarter uh, more cost effective decisions about it today whether or not i want to do it and then it comes down to a balance between uh you know can I, will expensive equipment make me a better reefer as far as in terms of long term and maintenance and all this other stuff? Yes, to some degree, but my trade off is I can, I can do spend all this money to uh, make things easier, make things more easier to maintain, uh, like buying the Abyss pump that has a 10 year warranty versus my Jabal pump or some other pump that I'm going to have to maintain constantly and stay on top of. Um, but uh, 
that expensive pump is not going to make me a better reefer. Yeah, man, it's going to be really know. interesting as we dive into this conversation because yes and no. I know, but I don't think brand new uh, brand new expensive gear is going to uh, help my longevity. Uh, my commitment to what it takes to properly maintain my middle of the road gear or lower end gear, mm -hmm. I can achieve the same thing. That's probably true in many cases. So I really try to take an authentic, you know, really think about this, get rid of the normal, more like garbage answers of like, it doesn't have to be expensive if you know, do a couple of things, whatever. And, 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 but when you add it all up, man, mm. you know what? It's still not cheap. It depends it on what- It doesn't matter what, what route you went. It depends on, uh, you know, what your definition of expensive is too. Uh, Thousands, in almost every case, no matter what you did, you're got, you've gotten there. When With I livestock in it? When I first came to BRS and I had access to the customer, uh, the customer's dashboards in our, our customer library and I went and looked at my own account and I saw that I spent $9,500, I was like, oh! Oh, oh my man. God. That's why we don't <laughs> add up the 160. Nobody wants to really know. All right. So this was my like attempt at a direct answer, even though I'm kind of squirrely. All right, so is it expensive hobby uh, and does money help you be more successful? Well, mm. if your goal here is essentially the same thing as your goldfish or beta, but in salt water, anyone can afford this. Mm -hmm. Go throw some clownfish in a glass box, throw some salt in there, get a little treasure chest that opens up, man, anybody can do this. Mm. All right, but if your goal is a sustained ecosystem uh, or collection of pets like fish, crabs, snails, clams, corals, and enemies, cucumbers, shrimp, a little slice of Indonesia or Australia here in Minnesota, uh, well, this isn't going to be the cheapest hobby you picked. It's right? typical, yeah. Flip side of that is it's also often less than what a dog or cat would cost you in a lifetime. So like, uh, I, I looked at this and it's, it's, this is a hybrid mix of hobby and pet ownership. In fact, it's like a collection. I mean, we got a hundred different pets in, in here that yeah, we're taking care of. Yeah, this is definitely hobby and pets. All right. All right, and so I looked at like what the AKC says that uh, average lifespan or cost of a dog or cat, and it's somewhere like 10, 15 grand. Throughout right? its entire life? Yeah, okay, and that makes sense. You get your vet bills, it costs a little bit to get it. Food, you fixed toys. it, you, you know, yeah, neutered yeah. it or whatever, yeah. food, toys. And that doesn't even include all the carpet it destroyed and all the other garbage you had to do along yeah. the way, right? But like nobody thinks about that way. It's a dog. I want a dog. I want a cat. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the same thing. And in fact, in this case, if you want you to look at a 10, 15 grand for your dog, nobody thinks about it that way because you don't want to know. Yeah. Same way we didn't want to know here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's really kind of the same thing. And you know, half the country, like 53%, owner dog or cat. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Is it expensive? It's really just kind of like in comparison to whatever it is you want to spend your money on. You know? Yeah, I mean, I could go out less often, uh, you know, to the bars, to bands, to all this other crap, and then dedicate my money to my fish or my pets or whoever, whatever I want to spend. Or, on. or quite frankly, for me, I could choose to have this instead of a cat. You could? Yeah, like people are doing that all the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So yes, there's that pit bit. Uh, okay. Here's the ugly part, though, man. This is the part that, like, I don't think people really think about enough, mm. right? It's, you know, you're weighing this, like, uh, does this light cost more than that light? Does this auto top off cost more than that auto top? Do you even need an auto top mm. off? Like, all this other stuff, right. you know? Uh, and a lot of the stuff that we're not really thinking about, we're thinking about, like, will it pump water? Now, the real question is, will it keep this animal alive for 10 years? Mm -hmm. Right, or like uh, be part of that journey anyway. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. the ugly part of this is a failed reef tank and dead animals are the most expensive and disappointing thing at any particular budget, doesn't matter if it's high or low. Mm. Losing all the animals and letting them die is the most expensive possible way you could do this. Yes. And the most devastating, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, so for every conversation I think that we have uh, around here anyway, when we're trying to think about this, is it doesn't just have an ROI on that piece of gear. And like, right. Will this pump last more, to give me right, more right, value right. or whatever? But what's the ROI against the losses of the animals that we're mm. caring for? Yeah. Either like uh, via not, money. Yeah, not monetarily, but emotionally. Or emotionally, yeah, both, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like I, I could, it, 
if we lost this here today, oh, right? If any of these fish that we like, especially the Bourbonus Santias and the Purple Tang, mm -hmm. any of these fish. Power outage tomorrow, man. Everything dies because <sighs> we messed something up or That's whatever. That's a heartbreak. Right? The whole thing is dead. Okay. Not only did I lose monetary, like the, I don't know what all these corals are worth. If you actually took all these mm. colonies and like sold them, I have no idea what they're worth. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Right. All the animals in there are a lot. All the gear. You can't just decide tomorrow to recreate it, man. It took like four five, years yeah. to get here. It's like four or five years worth of work. Yeah, and granted, the tank's kind of going up and down because right, right, right. we kept messing with it all the time. But minimum, it'll probably take you two and a half to three years to get to this point from the little Franks. It isn't, I just can replace it. No. Right? No, it's not yeah. like an RC car. So I'm like, oh, I crashed it in or rolled it. Nah, I just got to put a new body on it, a new motor. I'm good to go. All right, so that's the ROI like uh, component. If, is it expensive? I don't know. It's certainly not a rich person's thing because what we've identified here is that it costs the same as about, about, as, about as much as a cat a dog does over his life. And half the country owns a cat or a dog. So That's, I can't put it in a rich man's expensive. hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot. It's just what you prioritized. Mm -hmm. You know, so decide for yourself. All right. But has it gotten a lot more expensive, you know, recently? And so we'll take two stabs at recently since you entered the hobby in 2004. And I did, or 2014, and I did 2004. Yeah. Is it, was it cheaper in 2004 for you or the, the, whole, the whole community? Uh, in 2014? Mm -hmm. uh, for me personally, uh, I don't know if I can speak for the community because uh, for the people that I was around, the, the reefing people that I was around, uh, it was cheaper because, for a couple reasons. Um, I said it was cheaper because it was a lot harder to justify uh, buying the expense of buying uh, the right gear or newer gear because uh, we didn't have we didn't have any knowledge of how it worked specifically LEDs is what I'm talking about here so mm. uh, you know T5s I chose T5s because they were cheap. They were one of some of the cheapest lighting options you can get. They worked for tons of reefers. They worked for my mentor that brought me into the hobby. I'm going to emulate that. And then when you read on the forums and you're, you know, back in 14, or LEDs are kind of on the up, are still on the uprise. Uh, the amount of people having success with LEDs versus T5s was uh, you could hardly find, you could ha find a handful or a couple handful that were actually doing it right. That's good. Yeah, because nobody, mm -hmm. nobody freaking knew how to do Got it. Got more nobody, toys, yeah, not man. more success. Oh, look, man, look at how much, it was the middle of the par wars. Yeah, look how much par this thing puts out, thousands of par, thousands of par. And, and, but you couldn't really find a, you could find a good looking tank that had just recently switched over to LEDs because they didn't have shock their tank yet. So I couldn't justify the expense of like four Radeons, those four Radeon Gen 2s or Gen 3s, um, because my T5s were working just fine. It was cheap enough to get into, and I never saw one person that says, set it like this and you're gonna have great success. You, what, you, what you saw was, I paid four times as much to get worse results and a phone app. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that, the, that doesn't uh, pass the common sense test whatsoever for buying any new expensive if gear. If I own a reef tank to be able to put an app on my phone, success. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, a lot of those decisions, a lot of my cheapskate decisions uh, all were based on um, fellow reefers anecdotal success. So when it comes to my skimmer choice of the Reef Octopus Classic 110, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of skimmers out there, and, and I, my buddies had a bunch of them, these ska skimmers, these this skimmer, the this skimmer, the this skimmer. But the, mo the, person, uh, the people that I trusted the most, so, you know, as, as I was reading on what, what skimmer to get, I saw Reef Octopus at the top of most you know, uh, of the reviews of this other stuff. Again, it was cheap. It wasn't DC yet. They were, they were AC, and I think they might have started working on DC shortly thereafter. But... Uh, it was cheap, and I made that decision because everybody else has success for it, and everybody else said, for your money, this is good. Mm. So it wasn't, it wasn't terribly expensive. The only reason that I had a $9,500 account when I came here to BRS is later on, when I started getting into all of the, I want the, the phone-controlled uh, lights and the uh, Apex controller, I started getting into the, the gear junkie in me, and I just want all the bells and whistles and toys. For me, that's part of the hobby, the yeah. gear junkie part. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you, know, I, you know, we were just talking about that. Like, it doesn't matter what the hobby is. Like, I get equally excited about the All equipment the as I do yeah. about the result. And it's just part of the fun. <laughs> All right. 
So is that 2014 for you? 2014. It, I, it was definitely less expensive than it is today. And I have the feeling that I feel that that is because of the lack of knowledge and understanding of what these tools are and what the right tool for the right job is and how to use it. All right, all of you out there, if you have been around since 2004, and I always forget exactly the exact year I got in there. It's 2003, 2004, 2005, something like that. If you've been around that long, raise your hand and say, I have been, and tell me if this is true, okay? All right. For me, the hobby in 2004 was astronomically cheaper. Like, it is not a question of how much oh, cheaper it was. This is, uh, this is the time where, you know, you were applying a lot of the freshwater applications to saltwater applications, which is just inherently cheap. Dude, I got a list of them here, man. <laughs> like, corals were a fraction of the cost. It cost me $300 today. To fill it. It cost me oh. 50 man. Yeah. Like, at a fish store and online, it was even cheaper. Yep. Right? Uh, some of the fish were also a fraction of the price. Powerheads were 30 bucks because we use maxi jets. Yep. They were another 30 bucks if you wanted to add uh, the little MJ mod kits we put <laughs> on them that turned them into DIY tunesies. But yeah. tunesies back then, you know, were 250 bucks and everybody thought you were insane for spending 250 bucks on a radio controlled boat prop inside of a little plastic cage. <laughs> but at the same time, when we did the, uh, the little kits and put the boat prop on it, like, boom, tank comes to life. And you see the value mm. of going from little maxi jet flow to uh, real flow in the tank, like mm. tank transforms, everybody comes along with, and then high doors came yeah, in, yeah, still yeah. 30 bucks. Right. You make a good point about the cost of corals and fish, though, too, because oh, fraction pri prices have just, in with the uh, with the introduction of these morphs and these special names and all this other stuff, you know, I was flinging I was flinging corals for five, ten bucks a frag of mm -hmm. some of your standard stuff. My mom got charged like thirty, forty dollars for those same frags. Dude, if you, I like, like when I was in, in two thousand four, you could buy like a eight head colony or maybe probably big more than that. Like probably like a dozen head colony of. Uh, uh, frog spawn yeah. or torch colony or yeah, whatever yeah. for 60 bucks. Yeah, I could get Duncan at, f at five bucks a head. Just totally different world. Ah. Okay, heaters are 30 bucks. Lighting, like you talked about, was three, 400 bucks for a four foot tank. And I'm not talking like I could bargain budget it. Like, I don't think you could use today's stuff to achieve more results than I was achieving with the three to four hundred dollar item. <laughs> it was that tech fixture from Sunlight Supply. Yep, yep, yep. You know, it wasn't fan cooled. It wasn't uh, super special reflectors or anything, man. It was just super simple technology. Plug it in the wall, and I don't know anybody who didn't have success with it. Can't beat that. Refugium lights. People were using five dollar bulbs from Home Depot. I think there was an upgrade there. Mm -hmm. uh, RO was really kind of considered optional. Like, you know, go to your store until you get sick of going to your store and then use tap water dechlorinator, like, yeah, yeah whatever. Mm -hmm. And then if you did buy an RO stage, RO system, it was four stage for sure. Nobody really even knew what I've, you were removing. I got that too. Uh, DI, well, DIY chems were strong. Uh, so like, you know, we found calcium chloride and, and go to, uh, yeah. Go get some baking soda, go get mm -hmm. some Mrs. Wages. Super cheap, Good to super go. strong. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of knowledge on how to properly use additives, so most people didn't, right? So I walked in, they gave me some Kent, Kent Turbo Calcium, and uh, they said use it, you know, uh, the direction. <laughs> like, it's like, it's so vague, man, I don't know. Like a yeah. tablespoon every Thursday, and I always joke double on Thanksgiving because we're thankful. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. And so there wasn't like, nobody ever even told me about alkalinity. So nobody was buying any stuff and you know, you were, there's cost to it, you're mm. killing stuff. Yep. But like, it just wasn't like now, calcium alkalinity, everybody knows. Oh yeah. 2004, no. 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 And I have an employee here uh, or somebody interview and said, you don't need any of that stuff. All you need to do is put gravel in your overflow and it will maintain calcium alkalinity at any uh, uh, consumption in your tank. Like, I'm sorry, I can't hire you, dude. Uh, like I can't have you talking to people on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, but that was the level of knowledge, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, auto top offs. The you know a good one was sixty bucks. We're using these like uh, do it yourself kits, and really an auto top oh, was a junction, luxury item with the junction box that yeah. you kind of wire together on your own. Uh, even at sixty bucks, luxury item. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do it by hand. Uh, controllers. They didn't. They don't even exist. There was like an octopus one, but like I couldn't even figure out why you would want one. Power strips. Like it was, didn't. No, I didn't even really do Not that. Not even man. that. It was just like very, very like limited offering on it. Uh, but nothing like you know today. It didn't exist. Uh, test kit. 
Uh, dude, it was like the Red Sea test kit that came with 50 different tests in it that all sucked for 40 bucks. <laughs> uh, but you got, you, got, you got a dozen of them. I, I need to go invest in you know, a whole slew of different test kits for $300. 40 bucks, I got them all. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, I mean, that was great. Feeding them. Only thing anybody's feeding, brine shrimp and the cheapest felt pellets you could find. Well, like, that, that's what everybody oh, yeah, was doing. Yeah. Uh, UV? Oh, no, that's garbage. Totally unnecessary. Nobody would ever use an UV. Uh, why would you ever want that? So, no, nobody's buying that. Uh, the pumps we're all using, super hot. Mag drive? Super loud. Yeah. That was my go-to. But too. cheap. They yeah. were cheap, man, but, man, were they loud Mag 12? and hot. Super cheap. Okay, uh, fancy tank manufacturers like Red Sea and Waterbox and Planet Aquariums and all those guys, uh, Reef Savvy, non-existent. Mm -mm. Nobody you exists. Get, like You get your marine land and you're good to go. Yeah, Black Strip guy, <laughs> we're rolling. And like, all the stuff is way cheaper, man, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there were some custom tank manufacturers back then, but like now, I mean, look how many Red Sea tanks are out there and yeah, how dominant yeah. you know, they become because people actually look at this as a piece of furniture in your house now, not just a glass box to hold some goldfish. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, most of the sumps back then, do it yourself. You were fancy, man, if you had uh, an acrylic sump, right? That was a big <laughs> deal. Like, you were, you were rock and roll. It's like putting spinners on your car. <laughs> uh, so most people had, uh, you know, a glass box like uh, a 20 long and just put some dividers in it and now it's your sump. This is cheap, man. And not only that, but you're waiting for Petco days so mm. the 20 long is 20 bucks. Mm. Yeah, not, not a $300 sump. Interesting. Yeah. No, the I got one more. Okay, go, no, get one more because I, I just thought of something. Okay. Then LED lighting didn't exist, like you said. Mm. Uh, roller mats didn't exist. Auto water changers didn't exist. Cool sumps didn't exist. Uh, KZ actually did exist, but like was really popular in Germany, yeah. but hadn't made its way here in in like uh, to the effect that it has today. Same thing with Royal Exclusive. Here's the thing, though. Okay, there's no question. If you follow along with that, like everybody that was been around since 2004. Everybody will remember how much cheaper it was back then, right? Mm. Uh, but before we romance in those times too much, yeah. back then something else was also true. 90% of reefers didn't make it past the first year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nine in the ten success rates were way, failed way lower. In the first year mm. using what was available yeah. and the knowledge that was mm. available. Uh, they killed everything, quit the hobby. So whatever investment that they made was negative because there was actually no payoff here. You invested all that money and the only thing you got was a giant time suck, a bunch of heartache, and got pissed off and tore it out Throw of your it house. all away. It was a negative investment, <laughs> right? So nine out of 10 people experienced mm. that in that world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it so, would de oh, if there's one thing to say about today, we're definitely more successful reefers. Okay, and then there's, I bet you there's a handful of people watching right now. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, I came for 2004. I have been successful this whole time. Do take me a moment. Think about yourself for a moment. Are you a particularly smart individual? Are you particularly dedicated at whatever you do? Did you pour your attention into this in ways that most people don't? Like massive pet. There's the reason why. Yeah. That's why. That's, <laughs> that's why, why you're, you're the one better. ten and ten. <laughs> um, okay. This brings up, you know, because we were talking about, you know, the price of corals, the gear, all this other stuff, and there was a time, and you know, I really don't see. I don't know if I see it much anymore because I'm not uh, actively building tanks or, or gathering up the stuff like I was before. Uh, there was a time where. You know, you you didn't you didn't sell your buddy frags of corals. You didn't you you didn't go to the club and you try to make money on all your corals that you're growing. It was uh, it was a trade. Like you mm -hmm. you would all we'd always trade. Hey man, you've got that in your tank and I want it, and I've got this in your tank and you want it. Let's meet up as a group. Let's meet up as a club. We're gonna trade some corals. Oh hey man, you need pumps and stuff for your. You need lights for your thing. I got a bunch in the back back here. I've been holding on to this skimmer. You know, uh, I make RODI at my house, so why don't you come borrow some of my RODI? It was like this really nice sharing system, and everything was. Uh, really cheap to get because you, your local community would support you. So you just actually got this up for me. I yeah. got this thing about phrase. Back then, it was a frog's pond. 
It was a euphilia. Yeah. A pink one. Oh yeah. You know, a blue one. Yeah. You know, or a purple one. <laughs> uh, you know, it wasn't space dust. You know, emerald deluxe. green, yeah. alien eye, alien eye, <laughs> man, Bob Marley, Rasta, yeah, yeah, insanity. Yeah. So at some point along the line, it changed from a pet and an animal into like designer, a designer like collector's card. Yeah. Like you started collecting them like baseball cards, yeah. almost right, yeah. like or whatever you would collect, right? <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't just the animal anymore. It was a well-marketed animal. Mm. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Like, and there's truth to the fact that they did pick out the best ones and that one ended up with the Bob Marley name, but like... I, I mean, that it makes you feel like it sort of degrades, like you said. It, it loses its, uh, its animal pet, uh, you know, what's synonymous with an animal pet, the emotional connection with you have with it to something that's material and something I can buy and something that nobody else has. and. Uh, maybe it makes it less, uh, you know, painful when I lose it unless I paid a thousand dollars for that frag. Then it's my money I'm worried about rather than the animal. It's my, I'm more worried about losing my investment and hurt by that than actually like, you know, you killed a coral. Uh, that was an animal. Uh, it was your pet. Maybe, but, I don't know. That'd be an interesting connection that would be here what people thought about. I can't blame people, man. I, honestly, I kind of get sucked in that thing too. Like, I want to collect them. Well, there's you know, I want all the different variants of everything. In fact, I was watching a YouTube video with Dave earlier, and mm -hmm. this guy had this Euphilia garden, man, of like every possible every color, shade yeah, uh, yeah. of torch, and I'm like, I want that. Mm. You know, like that's so cool, man. Right? And like, it was just really, really neat. I, I mean, I don't know how you could possibly remember the name of all of them, but you know, there's a, uh, there's. People that get in the hobby, and I, I, I'm guilty of this too, right? kind of when I got in the hobby. And I just, I, I started this discovering that you could frag corals, and then you could go turn them into stores for credit or sell them. And there's something about getting in the hobby thinking that it's end, going to end up paying for itself. I've heard that so many times. Like, man, I'm just going to start fragging corals. I'm going to sell them. I'm going to flip them. I'm, and it's going to pay for itself. And it never does work out that way. I, although I did get a lot of good gear from it, but. All right. So I'm gonna ask you now. Makes it cheaper. Why now has it changed so much? And you heard a little bit of this, so we'll float over if we've already said it uh, to mm -hmm. some degree, but like, why is it so expensive today? Like, cause you spend now enormous sums of money on it. And again, in relative to other pets, it's probably the same, but still it's like a fish tank. So it seems like a lot of money. Yeah. Why is it so expensive different than it was before? I, uh, I'm going back to, you know, the, it's the, it's the expansion of our knowledge of maintaining these animals to, or maintaining our pets to give them the longest, happiest, healthiest life that we can, being as, as successful we can. And now that we have this knowledge, I, I've got some examples like, uh, you know, a seven stage RODI unit instead of a four now, because I know the, I know what's now, I know what's potentially in my water and why an upgrade will ultimately lead to my success. I don't have to worry about the water. Four stage, it was, you know, that was a luxury item if you're not, if you're not gonna dechlorinate tap water. Now I can make the justification because of my, our understanding of what's in our water and how it can affect our tanks that I can justify the cost of a seven stage and now that is the goal of the equipment to get. LED is the same thing. LEDs that may, that meet our tank goals and uh, coral needs. I now know what it takes to achieve a tank that I want using LEDs. Um, and then, and you know that maybe people got into LEDs because of the form factor and the aesthetics and stuff early on. Um, but when you combine that with, I now know what it takes to be successful with LEDs. They're more attractive, and I'm more. I can make the justification to buy them versus seeking out something cheaper. I mean, nobody's buying fluorescent lights for any of the, any application in their life. And so yeah. like, there's just like natural gravitation. So yeah. I, I still tell you the T5s, man, like produce the desired result. Mm -hmm. I still use them all the time in conjunction with uh, my Kessels, you know, yeah. like, I, but like <laughs> at the same time, man, like this is, I know this is a dying technology as well. Well, and that's and that brings up a good point too. Is uh, a lot of the reasons why the you know it's more expensive now is because the technology is evolving. How, what, how much did an iPhone cost you back when iPhone one came out? How much does an iPhone cost you now? You want more out of it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I want, want more be, out of it. 
That's it's like it's more of a camera than it is a phone. Nowadays. Yeah, it's like my yeah. protein skimmer. You know, back in the day, I slap an AC pump on. I didn't give I didn't give a damn about how much air it drew, and maybe more air is better. And I just put a pump on the side of a cylinder and I let it ride. But now it's I'm willing to pay more for a protein skimmer that. I understand the mechanics of how it works. It's an adjustable filter. I can tune it to the best application rather than just slap it in there and hope it works. Now I'm willing to pay more money for that technology. So the phone thing is actually such a great analogy because mm. when the iPhone came out, like now I'm just dinosauring myself too. Yeah. <laughs> but like when uh, the, that kind of technology came out, man, 99% of what I was using this phone for is to talk to a human being. Yeah. Okay, maybe text them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now. Oh, man. 90, I don't 3% of what I use it for is to talk, talk to, to a people. human being. I'm searching Most the of web, it is searching the web, photos. checking my emails, using the camera, yep, yep. uploading videos to my Facebook. Whatever, <laughs> you know, like, dude, I, I, I find out what my buddies are doing on Facebook. Yeah. You know, who knows? Like, but so little of it is phone. Oh, yeah, for and sure. So there's a reason why my phone went from 100 bucks to 1,000. To 1,000, <laughs> that's, like, that's a great analogy. Yeah. I don't know. All right, so... For me, man, why is it so expensive today? It's the opposite of what I just said before. The cost of failing is so, so great, but the cost of doing something successfully, consistently, in a way that nine out of 10 people don't fail, just costs more. Just, yeah, it I mean, just costs more. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, it can be time or money, by the way. So there's lots of people out there that solve all this problem with just overwhelming amount of attentiveness to the tank, right? Yes. So, especially in those first few years, because uh, a lot of times the tank requires less attention uh, as it goes on. Mm -hmm. But in those first few years, a lot of people will get past all of the technology and all the other garbage just by paying close attention to the tank. Uh, I make that point here yeah. later on too. That's, so it's a good point. It's really easy to say, like, you don't need all that technology, you don't need all that stuff, because you just need to pay attention. I'm like, I don't know, dude. I got three kids, man. <laughs> I, 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 like, they're, they're, the older most one's four. Dude. Oh yeah. The, the youngest one's six to <laughs> five months. I don't get. It. <laughs> <laughs> don't pay attention. Don't, to don't it. hate on me, man. Uh, <laughs> I got little time. Okay. All right. So, the other part of this is successfully caring for a pet. Turns out, especially something that actually doesn't belong in Minnesota, belongs in Fiji. Oh, yeah. We're creating a little like, ecosphere for it here. Just isn't cheap. It's going to it's gonna uh, cost me. End of story, man. Dogs can uh, live here in Minnesota naturally. Successful being the key word there. Yep. yep. Uh, and for me, successful, that can be a different for all of you. But for me, it means approaching something similar to its natural lifespan. You know, and I'm not talking about the fact that most of them get eaten, mm. you know, so they only have a lift six months. But like, no, nah, man, like, if I got, I'm going to choose to care for a puppy, man, and like, I don't care that, you know, most puppies in the wild would probably die in six months. That's yeah. not my goal. Yeah. You know, like, my goal is to, like, have it die of natural causes. You know? Actually, uh, Jen, uh, she told me today that um, her long-lived coral beauty of 26-ish years just recently passed, like, in the 26 last 26 years, A man. fish for 26-some years. Mm -hmm. Ah, man, that's success. My naked clown's still living in a that's kicking success. kick over there. Yeah, yeah so, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. So, like, again, I had it written here. If you killed a puppy every 12 months, I would not call that success. <laughs> no. Yeah, so if you started up a reef tank and killed everything in 12 months, there was not 12 months of success there. No, I don't <laughs> think so. It was a failure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is uh, something I learned this year. Now, change that whole mechanism of uh, 9 and 10 fail. Mm -hmm. I've now found out that BRS customers, half of them last 10 years. Mm. 10. Meaning they're still yeah. getting saltwater products 10 years later. Still, I know this because they're still customers. They're yeah, still which means stuff. they have a tank still. Yeah, so half of the people who were buying stuff 10 years from now, 10 years ago, still are buying it today. Mm. Half, man. And we're not talking about getting past 12 months, man. We're talking about getting past a decade. That's huge. Yeah, that is very, very That's different huge. than it was in 2004, yeah. right? And in fact, actually, this actually goes back to like 2011 because things had changed. You know, in 2011, this, that's how old you'd have to be to be 10 years now, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so it's very, very interesting. And it was 2008 where we started launching all the YouTube videos and trying mm. to help people be successful mm. and learn how to, how to use the Kent Turbo. That's company, all they right? care about. All right. Make you successful. All right, so this is the reasons why I think that people are so successful today. And some of them are equipment and some of them aren't, but you can see how the equipment and the new processes and technologies 
are riddled through this, all of them optional, but why, if they're done the right way, yeah. the trajectory of being successful gets so much longer, Yeah. right? Okay. So first off, those seeking knowledge, uh, those who are seeking knowledge and find it, it changes the total success, success trajectory. So all the people who are trying to find information on how to do this right, you know, they go on YouTube now. Yep. I learned that 60, uh, 60 plus percent of people who are trying to learn about how to do saltwater aquariums now do it on YouTube exclusively. Well, I, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's true of like anything, even like uh, uh, fixing your own car. Yeah, uh, I can be. I'm so much more successful at fixing my own truck now than I was before because I, I can sit there and watch a guy do it, pause, do it myself. Yeah, so it's, that's a different type of technology because when I started, it was books, books it was magazines, forums. forums. I was yeah. literally going into people's basements in the clubs and trying to like suck knowledge out of them, mm. and it was really valuable. I, I remember the first meeting I went to, and I was like trying to talk to somebody about SPS corals, and I'm like, yeah, everybody tells me I need halides and all this stuff. And this guy walks up to me, uh, I think his name was, oh, no, I can't remember his name. Mm. Well, anyway, he walks up to me and he says, dude, that's all garbage, man. Dude, you can't have every last awesome thing, but you got an eight bulb T5. Regardless of what anybody will tell you, you can have uh, SPS in your tank. And specifically try something that, like, Pilsilopora, man. Yeah. Or, like, where, Easy you stuff. know, if it works good, and then you can just start working your way up there and, like, Thank you, man. Instead of listening to all this garbage telling me what I can't do, teach me how to do yeah. what I can. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, you like, go. bravo. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in your basement, whatever. But instead of all that, I got all just like all these other sources. I go to YouTube and I can just soak it all up. I can find a mentor, somebody that like seems to be doing successful and start learning. I totally get it. <laughs> all right. So, this is a big thing that's changed since 2004, too. Nutrient control, no longer an issue. Absolutely, was a monstrous oh, issue back then. Yeah, huge issue. Okay, but now you like it's upgraded your fuge light from the five dollar thing. You know we have DC needle wheel skimmers. We actually know how to use them better today. Carbon dosing is now like rampant. You know, an excellent solution out there. Scrubbers, auto water changers. You know, all kinds of different things out there where nutrients actually getting keeping nutrients in the tank is now the problem. Yeah, it's definitely not the barrier to success yeah. like it was before. Most of it technology. Mm -hmm. Most of it is technology. Those horticulture lights, yeah. those In fact, scrubbers. Part of the reason we were killing stuff back then is because every single thing that we were ever told was feed them as little as possible. These fish never eat. You know, they may only get a meal every three days, so you can feed them twice a week and yeah. just fine. And then the flip side out of their mouth later on would be, yeah, fish just die. It's okay if they die a couple times Ugh. a year. You know, that's just part of the thing that happens Ugh. in the tank. No, those things were actually intertwined, <laughs> man. Uh, that's a terrible advice. Oh, man. And it, it actually, your, that generic type of advice that was coming out mm. was actually partially true. There are some types of fish that eat in the wild every three days. Meanwhile, you got Anthony is just dying blood. in yeah. plagues yeah, in our tanks because we feed th twice a week. All sorts of species in there that are different. Yeah. Okay. Chemistry, no longer an issue. Uh, you know... But knowing how it could be done better than we were doing, it does have a cost. Various degrees, like, you know, we were, a lot of us, including myself, using baking soda and whatever, mm -hmm. and yep. we're using, yep, yep. you know, street de-icer and whatever, because it's cheap. <laughs> well, okay, once you start looking, we're doing the ICPs on it later on in life, and we're looking at all the brown crud, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, this could be done better. And like now in this case, it's the actually cost like to do better two is, bucks a month. Yes, yeah, and some So it does cost more. Day. Get some pharmaceutical grade materials and stuff. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, but now you're understanding not just in terms of quality, but like, you know, to me, trace elements. In 2004, trace elements were pitched as snake oil. Mm -hmm. You know, like you don't need that crap. You know, it, water it, changes. Yeah, whatever. Now I understand how all of those elements actually regulate, you know, the processes of producing energy, producing protein, assembling amino acids, regulating photosynthet photosynthetic process within the uh, zooxanthellae. All of these things, man, are unknown, but like, I don't know exactly how they work, but I know that they all matter, and I know mm. it for sure. It's like unquestionable. I talk to any actual marine biologist that knows corals and specializes, they'll tell you for sure. There's no question. Yeah. It's just obvious in 2004 they will say oh, no value it, it, no value because i can't see and De i can't see it immediately defy all known biology uh, that no minerals matter <laughs> uh, uh, endless depletion that just doesn't uh, make uh, sense uh, okay okay but yeah we start to get that uh, understand that a little bit better hopefully find ways that are not particularly expensive 
you know, there's things out there, you know, that are really expensive ways to do it. Then there was like the, let's mix in the uh, hybrid method with uh, the, no, 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 the, the Tropic Marine. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know? Uh, trace elements and BRS. Yeah, like they've been doing this uh, balling method with trace elements for eons, but let's give you the bulk, you know, core pro components of it really yep. cheap. Yep, so yep. there's that piece of it. Proper flow, no longer an issue, but also has a cost, right? Yes. So all these things have a cost. Proper flow, we're using maxi jets, man. Well, once we started putting the boat props on it, like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, the, the success rates skyrocket. Yeah. When you're allowing the coral to get rid of all of the oxidants and byproducts of photosynthesis and getting the oxygen and CO2 mm -hmm. and gas exchange, getting all of the processes that happen in the ocean happening in your tank. Oh, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I, couldn't, I can't believe it works. Although it used, yeah. to, be, uh, it used to be just, now yeah, slap some power heads and then you need some kind of flow. Okay, I, mean, I don't know why. I still don't know why a pump with a boat prop on it costs 200 bucks, but uh, it, does, <laughs> it and, does, you know, in many cases. And there are options, you know, you can get like the Jabows and stuff off of eBay. Mm. But part of the whole thing is uh, that stuff that breaks in 12 months is not the solution to maintaining a pet for 10 years either. Yeah. Like trying to catch that stuff, continually catch it as it breaks has a, you know, a pattern of not success. Yeah, that's yeah. the, well, you're successful if you're sitting around your tank all day, every day, and you are that in tune to catch it, but nobody's got that luxury, I don't think. I mean, Jabal's got to be approaching 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to find that many people who said, I've been using that for a decade. Does somebody have a pump yeah, out it, there? It falls off pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Uh, all right. So there's other things, though, they, like... The parts of this that have different kind of costs, you know, like you don't necessarily buy this from a fish store or BRS, but the inevitability of things like power outages are now embraced. We're not like, you don't mm. need a generator, you don't need whatever, like, yeah, if the goal is to be successful for 12 months or less, you definitely don't I need I don't need a things. generator, I don't need battery yeah. backups. If you want to care for your pet for 23 years like Jen did, uh, yeah. You better have something in place. You're gonna, how many power outages are you gonna run in the next two decades? <laughs> Uh, uh, you're, not gonna, you're not going to lock your dog up in some vacuum chamber and say, ah, well, he doesn't need air. Okay. Now, <laughs> like, this is the, I don't want to go, we you guys all heard this pitch before, so I don't go too far into it. But right. this is where, you know, people can bring in the controller conversation, you know, and like all this automation's happening now, and like, you know, all these things happen, and then the other thing happens mm. to fix it, whatever. Mm. But I was going to say, controllers come in, and this is where the real time notification of something is wrong is happening. For instance, I woke up today and found out that my auto top off sensor was dirty uh, and uh, the pumps were running dry mm. this morning. Man. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I didn't go down there this morning. Otherwise, I wouldn't go down there for any reason. You wouldn't have known. I just come to work with dry pumps. I mean, maybe the pumps are burning out. Maybe, uh, who knows? You know, mm. like this isn't good news. So it's just real time notification. The the sump's dry, man. Well, that's like when, back when I first got when I the reason I first got my Apex or first got my into controllers because I the gear, the tech, the controllability, having this activate this and this and this and this and this, and this so attractive because it was cool and it was fun. But the the conversation just flipped now. It's like okay, those those naysayers against aquarium controllers and ah, you don't need that. Ah, it's just a wasted cost. It's not when I have like seven or eight thousand dollars worth of fish and corals in my tank, and the minute that I'm gone at work for eight, ten hours a day, and I come back, and as soon as I walked out the door, everything you know, shit hit the fan. Mm -hmm. And now I've just lost that investment. So tell me at that point that my controller is not important. Okay, so here's the th here's the piece of it. Just like the dog cat, it didn't cost fifteen grand day one. It took it cost fifteen grand over the course of fifteen years. Yeah. So you don't. You don't have to buy all that stuff day one, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, But you're just like, you're like, I'm on a path where I need to start. Yeah. Like at this point, nobody would look at this tank, tank and say, I don't want to I have don't need a, a $500 controller Shit. to tell me that like when th things are going wrong. Yeah. I don't know a single person that would make this that investment would trust in this, this tank. To the wind? Well, if you put this much money into it to begin with, that there isn't budget for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did it have to come day one? No. Even if I slowly piece this together with little chunks at a time and it doesn't feel like one big, massive uh, dump to my wallet, at this point in its life, why would you leave anything to chance? It's true. Ah. All right. Okay. Hobbies are also... Uh, 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 oh, this is in relation to the why corals cost so much. Ah. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe this, even by on the, beyond the Bob Marley 
Rasta, you know, the Ellie, you know, <laughs> Ellie. Okay. Because everybody's having so much success, we're not, you know, kicking the bucket with these tanks in 12 months anymore. We're having 10 years of success. There's a pressure on the supply chain. Mm. So pressure on the supply and demand of fishing corals is driving the cost up. The reason that they cost so much is because we're willing to pay for them because they are scarce. Not yeah. scarce like they're getting rubbed off the planet, but like when I go into the fish store, there isn't that many of the awesome thing. Yeah. And so it's a supply and demand thing where mm -hmm. because we're willing to pay for it collectively as a hobby and there's 10 times as many of us as there were in, in 2004, well, the cost went up. And you would think that like, that would be mitigated to some degree by the, all of the success and people trimming and fragging and selling and sharing and stuff like that. Like the, is it the is it the demand on the uh, or culturing them or harvesting them from the like Indo and uh, Hawaii's and the Fiji's? I, and I don't know the really answer, but like if they could have sold, there there wasn't like a new launch of demon fish owners, or fish store owners. If those guys could have gotten 300 bucks for that colony back in 2004, they would have. They yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. That's, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? And so for whatever reason, like, I went in the store, and there were lots of corals, man, that, yeah. like, yeah. I looked at it like, oh, I can't afford that $70 thing. Like, I can't, I, I can't go home with three of these things. I'm no. only going to have one, no. right? And yeah. now I, I can go like, in the store oh my God, and be like, buy them all if they were 70 a, bucks. A $1,500 pack uh, for five Ellie uh, corals? Heck, yeah. I, I did, think I've done that. <laughs> I think part of it also is it's transitioned from it's becoming more of a popular hobby than it was back then. Mm -hmm. And so like a lot of people that are entering it now, you know, like I think are starting to really grasp the fact that it's an animal, you care for it. Mm -hmm. And animals imported from Fiji to uh, the United to Minnesota like just aren't cheap. No. Uh, I don't know. They have value. There's no world where you should right? think that they're going to be cheap. Yeah, the same way my puppy has value. In fact, the coral man is a lot rarer than puppies. That's uh, true. And it's probably harder to get to Minnesota. Yeah. Than, than <laughs> the I, I don't know. Uh, so, I, I, but I do believe that. I think it's just pressure on the supply chain mm. and what people are willing to pay. That, for the reason I say that is, that's why I don't think it's going to change. I think that as we are more and more successful, it will continue to see this, things like that. Well, does that lead into our, our next question? Mm -hmm. Does it have to be that way? Does it have to be that way? And the answer is no. Uh -uh. There are actual bunches of, a whole bunch of ways to actually change the trajectory of this conversation. Mm. Now, we, it, it, like everything, like the answer, you know, usually there's just two camps. So like it can yeah. be cheap, you know, like all those bastards making it expensive or man, all you losers making it cheap, whatever. And it's like these two camps that never really worry about each other's side, yeah. you know? The answer is always in the middle. Always. Right? Like we've made advancements and many of them are worth uh, uh, incorporating the in money our system, for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially if I think about it over time. And no, I don't need every last one of them. You yep. know, in fact, if I did all of them, that might not be good, especially if I had to learn them all at once in the beginning. Right. Right. Uh, so the answer is always in the middle, but there's some ways I think that we can change this conversation and curve it back towards mm. cheaper. Towards well. cheaper. Yeah. All right. So I'll let you start. Well, I'll just take, uh, take, take them back and forth. Okay. So, you know, does it have to be that way? Okay. Now that I'm approaching you know, a decade in the hobby and all of the knowledge I've gained and the tanks that I've set up and the trials and tribulations and stuff like that, I feel like uh, with the knowledge that's, that I have, I could go source my gear, my tank, my equipment, my corals, my fish, um, and I could set up, a, I could set up a, a, a really good tank for under a grand. Maybe even 500 bucks. Okay, I don't believe you. I don't. Okay. I, I mean, a reason that I say that is because I, we've tackled these like budget systems so mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. Like, we, everybody asks us to create a budget, you know, series, oh, budget all the time. series and whatnot. And like, we go and we try to pick out the cheapest stuff well, okay. out there, and no matter what, new yeah it's 1500 ah, bucks that's that's the, the with point. no fish or coral that's the point of my argument is i come from a line of people I, the friends that i hang out with the family that i have where uh 
have we have most of us ever bought anything big and new, uh, brand new? No, because we can. I can go out and find good deals or search for sales or purchase at the right time or find gently used things, clean them, fix them, maintain them, uh, uh, trucks and vehicles and you know four wheelers and toys and things like that. I would never imagine going and buying something new personally for something like that because I can go to this website called, you know, this auction website called Crash Toys, find a motorcycle that's beat the hell, buy all the parts for it, put it all back together, and then care for it as if it were brand new. And I've just made that motorcycle 10 times cheaper than if I just went and bought a brand new one. I can do that with the knowledge that I have the, of the maintenance, the gear that's good, what to look for, going on these you know, Facebook sites and Craigslist sites. Now that I've done all this with new equipment and with some used stuff, I am confident that I could go out and build it and put together a, a well-running tank that lasts five years plus with the crap that I find. And the trade-off is paying money for brand new expensive stuff or sucking it up and accepting the fact that I am going to uh, put more time, effort, and dedication into maintaining and keeping this as pristine, this gear as pristine as possible so that it lasts me longer. Okay, there's so, a balance there. I think part of that conversation is, is it your time piece? Is your time more mm. worth the sourcing and caring for gear than it is you know, just getting just getting, getting gear that lasts the it's more expensive and lasts long. This is the part I like really bite into. When yeah. you said five hundred bucks, bullshit. Mm -hmm. No way, man. Because mm -hmm. like the bucket of salt, the cheapest bucket of salt, fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna reuse sand? D is this, does this person that you bought from still have that n nasty, stinky sand around, and we want to use that thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know, cause you got hundred bucks in sand now. Uh, have you added a single fish, coral, snail, crab, shrimp, anything into this matrix? No, you know, and so had the bulbs on this thing. Are you gonna use the 10 year old bulbs they have on, <laughs> on this? Like, so once you start adding it all up, yeah, I mean, I bet you for 500 bucks, I could get a the glass box, gear. a stand, some type of so. uh, lighting apparatus, a couple of pumps, hopefully they work, uh, that they were cleaned properly before mm. they were stored. Yeah. Things like the heaters, they should go, I don't care. Uh, you should throw your way, your, who knows how long those heaters are old. Like That's right. your number one failure point. And then I need to buy a lot of livestock, sand. Good. Is the rock still sitting around? I, uh, to, to prove the point, I picked up a 40 breeder system with lights, MP10s, Apex, uh, Apex Junior, uh, f with the fish, with the corals in it, with uh, everything working uh, in d decent, con uh, decent order. 400 bucks on Craigslist because the dude just wanted it out of his house. Yeah, well, use, get, use aquarium and here that, has zero value. And that's like me, that's less like, than even the Apex cost That's like new. me going and buying my truck over in uh, in Ohio because for six months I spent looking in the entire uh, North uh, North America waiting for that right deal to come along and then jump on it. This is like a, a, a good point. There's like a lot of people out there like, uh, I'll just, just buy a brand new car. Right, I don't want to deal with a headache. There whatever, is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the difference: the car is uh, thirty grand, me. or yeah. it's uh, you know used uh, one year, so all the way drops twenty five. Great yeah. value. Yeah. Now a lot of people are still going to buy new, and I know that because a lot of new cars get sold every day. That's true. But if the used one was six grand, no new cars would ever be sold. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that's true. That's what you just described, actually, right? Yeah. And so. The used golf stuff provides that kind of value in the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you like the flip side of that though is the problem with the used stuff is the usually it wasn't taken down because uh, like I carefully just chose to take this down. I was just kind of done with this hobby, but everything was thriving. It was like this turned into a giant shit show. That's it was true. filled with LG That's in true. my house, and I got mad. And I just took it all down and Threw I it stored in my garage. In my garage. Yeah. Everything is covered in salt. Mm. Uh, everything now is corroded. You know, the seams, who knows, on yeah. the tank, you yeah. know, like, so this is the piece. When you talked about sourcing, you said you went and sort of looked for this used car all over the place. Six when, months. Yeah, six months yeah. found in Hawaii, or uh, Ohio. In Ohio. Okay, this is the same thing with the used gear. Like, you can't just find one and go. No, it. no, 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 no. What you've adopted is I'm looking for this super mega deal, and I'm willing to put time and resources mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. That means that you gotta go look at the system and say, 
was this thing carefully cleaned oh, yeah. before, rinsed, ca oh, yeah. well cared for, and put away in a way that it will be used again in the future? And if I, if I want it so bad, or if I want a system so bad, uh, then I will, you know, it's willpower to not jump on just any old thing. Yeah. It's a lot of willpower to just be like, ah, oh, man, that, that seems like a good enough deal. Let's just go with that. No. And I get mad at my grandpa and, and my girlfriend's dad all the time because they always seem to find these super mega, oh my God, I can't believe you got that deals. But that's because they are constantly looking and they're not going to do anything until the right one comes along. This actually always goes back to the puppy too, because like a brand new mm -hmm. like purebred uh, you know, golden retriever puppy uh, from the right place could be 2500 bucks. Six month old puppy, yeah, 500. <laughs> it's, it's used. Yeah. <laughs> it's a used, used puppy. You, you lost the best I'll six take months it. of the puppy. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so but that would be my tip, though, is okay. like, don't go into a mentality. The reason you're getting this great deal is because actually nine out of ten of these things are piles of garbage sitting in somebody's uh, then that problem one you don't want. only comes around every so often. So if you're willing to go out and look at 15, you can cut the cost of this down dramatic, like, like man, probably 80%. Yeah. That, that much. Yep. So if you're looking for deal, the, ar the argument is like, the argument of trying to find out what the best new pump price for your dollar. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is yeah. garbage. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that should just erase that from the conversation. If I'm buying it's new. Definitely used. Oh yeah. Yeah. If I'm buying new new brand new gear, I, there's a difference between the super high end uh, with a 10 year life warranty like a biz or the middle of the road that has great performance, great reviews, works for a lot of people like the Reef Octopus versus the super cheap that I'll probably have to use 10 of for it to actually, to get one that actually works for a long time, mm. like the really cheap uh, Amazon one. I'm asking you this question, right. I'm asking all of you guys too, so chime in. Mm. If I had a box and it had two well cared for tunes controllable pumps mm -hmm. in it, or three sets of brand new Jabows, mm. which one you want? Oh, the tunes pumps. Yeah, well cared for. If you're gonna get, yeah. if you're just gonna let me choose one or the other. Yeah, like, it, it, or three sets of garbage, right? Yeah. So the now, reason I, I've had Jabal pumps that worked plenty good for a while, and then I took my systems down, and they became my frag systems because uh, my frag system pumps because I was less concerned about them being my display. Um, but not that's not to say every single one is going to be ten garbage. year path. Uh, how many times are you gonna fail? True. Uh, the tunes will probably still be around. I will have swapped those things out plus three more by then. Right. Yeah. So, like they say that because the use conversation is like, would I rather go continually buy these uh, cheaper pumps off of Amazon, or go find some well cared for used ones mm. uh, from someone else and buy those? And which one of these will bring more success to my tank? Success being these animals live as long as they should. Yeah. In the wild. Yeah. I. We obviously don't know the answer, and this is a personal uh, opinion, but for me, the well cared for Tuneses are the right answer. Yeah. I would put more faith after doing this uh, for 17 years. That's where I put my faith, mm -hmm. it is the used well cared for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, okay. Water changes and paying attention. So, the next way you can make this cheaper. Yep. Water changes and paying attention to tank is the universal way to save, save cash. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, if you pay attention to the tank, you see it, you check it in the morning before you leave, you check it when you go home, you know, put your finger in, make sure it's cold, yeah. you know, watch the, Get into a you rhythm. Know, you know, all yeah, the things yeah. you need to do. Uh, and you do your water changes so you don't have to worry about the chemistry as much because they're being diluted every time, uh, all the mistakes. Hmm. Uh, like this will replace expensive gear uh, and limit expensive losses as well. Yep. So if you want to do this cheap, especially in the beginning, a good water change schedule, man. And just paying attention uh, to your tank. And paying attention to your tank. That's it. Done. Yeah. And then you can add on these things as time. And again, this becomes that journey again of like, like I didn't incur the entire yeah, cost of the puppy. It's not day 10 one. grand like in the first month. It's 10 grand over the course of 10 years. So a grand yeah. a month. And I, I also get to or learn what it's like to yeah. take care of the tank up front, mm -hmm. you know, instead of relying mm -hmm. on all this I gear get better right away. At it then, yeah. yeah. And so, over the time, I can also get more reliant on technology and more reliant on, uh, you know, presumably in 10 years, I got a better job than I did 10 years ago, too, and yeah. I can afford some more mm -hmm. things I used to be able to afford when I left college, yeah, you know? Yeah, true. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. 
like uh, I think that that's important to think about is one of the ways it's cheaper is don't think about it like I gotta spend all that money day one. It's insane. No. Very, very few people do that. Like I said, well, like I said, when I joined, when I came here to BRS and looked at my account and saw that I spent nine thousand five hundred, it, it wasn't like oh, I started the hobby and then moved here. It was like that ah, was about three, five years later, and my account was up to nine ninety five hundred bucks. But I mean, I'm not gonna say. I mean, a lot of people, the people that the people that go out and spend the fifteen grand day one, are people like myself. It's money, right? Yeah. I've been doing this for seventeen years. I will do it for seventeen more. Yeah. Uh, and like, I will you, choose this thing over something else in my life that I want because it's part of my passion and things I enjoy. And I don't need to learn all the damn lessons I learned before yeah. the hardest yeah. way. You already know. Uh, I just going to implement it. Knowledge, right? Yeah. And you know, now, for me, form matches function, too. You know, that's an uh, evolution yeah. of a hobby. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, early on when you were uh, 21, you tricked out your, like, your Honda, <laughs> you know, into Subaru. I got the, I, yeah, I got the 12-inch, you know, JL audios, and I got the amp, and I got the deck, and the body looked like crap, but, damn, my, my sound system was awesome. Yeah, well, you had your turbochargers, your <laughs> NOS on there. But someday... You just yeah. buy the damn car. <laughs> it was supposed <laughs> to be in the beginning. Uh, and that happens for everybody. Okay, so also embrace the fact that buying wrong the first time only makes it cost double. That's true. Right? Yep. So, like, I have, you guys have heard this story before, but, like, I bought the wrong skimmer once. I bought the wrong skimmer twice. I bought the wrong skimmer four times. I added a new pump onto the skimmer to make it better. And then I finally bought the real one. Five times. Yeah, cost me five times more expensive. Oh, my God. And I ruined my floors and flooded them along the way. <laughs> yeah. It is way, way. And, like, anybody who has been doing this for more than four and a half days will tell you that buying the wrong stuff over and over again is way more expensive. Do your water changes mm. and pay attention to the tank and just save up for the thing that you really want. Well, yeah, and, and we still do, we still do yeah. it though, as hobbyists. I say that as the primary benefactor. Everybody here's job exists because <laughs> nobody listens to that. Yeah, we'll I just know. buy it over and over and over and over again. You guys are giving me, you guys, hobbyists are giving me a job because they bought this wrong skimmer once, bought the wrong skimmer twice, bought the wrong skimmer three times. Now uh, we're sitting here with the job, but we're telling you, don't do that. In fact, if everybody listening today stopped <laughs> buying the garbage and only bought the thing that was really going to work for them and they didn't have to do all those upgrades, we go out of business. <laughs> I'm telling you, drive us out of business and it won't be true because you'll be successful. Yeah, you'll be successful. You'll set up another tank, some other yep. person will yep. see your success, you'll bring enjoy it. In. You'll bring joy to other people's lives. That won't really happen. Yeah, but, but definitely marketing teams right now is like, what's wrong with Ryan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't funny. know. All right, so livestock piece here. You wanna get livestock cheaper? I'm gonna, uh, you need to really embrace this piece. Mm. If you wanna get livestock cheaper, it means that you're going to have to find sources and undercut market prices, mm. right? Uh, it, it, it's not, the fish store change is not gonna change. Mm. Like you're not gonna start seeing all this stuff sold uh, dramatically cheaper. With one element, Maybe some of the stuff that is getting farmed will get cheaper. The named super Walt Disney thing, of course, will get cheaper. But as, there'll be one that replaces it. For, for livestock, my, my idea of getting it cheaper is, uh, isn't that. My idea of getting it cheaper is I used to... Uh, so be, because it's an extension of our hobby, the QT and the medicating and all this other stuff, like... I am willing to spend my time, set up a, uh, a system that, you know, I can go to my fish stores. Uh, like I used to go to Petco all the time and, and cut deals for this sick looking fish because mm. I would take them home. If they're not going to do it there at the store, then I would take a chance on them, bring them home, try to get, you know, get them through the, the quarantine, bring them back to health. And now I just had I, I just saved you a couple hundred bucks on this fish because I chose to put the work and heart and effort into fixing this one. So I believe that's true for the one percenters. <laughs> that's not a scalable thing. No, like if no. everybody went out looking only for sick stuff to revive, uh, that that is. You're right. You're right. right. You're right. So this is why I was that's saying, under market. This to me means you're going to have to go find unique ways to stock your tank. Why? And they're not like totally crazy either. I found trade shows like uh, the Reef of Paloozas. Oh, yeah. You go to one booth and it's all $300 elite stuff. 
Another one, you'll still find trays of stuff that are 10 bucks. Yes. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're seven bucks if you get them on Sundays. Yep. Uh, you know, go to the if last. You wait day. to the last second. Yeah. They don't want to come home with this stuff. They'll actually bargain with you now. Yep. Uh, five bucks if you take 10 of them. You know? Yeah. Now I got 10 corals for 50 bucks. That's a heck of a yeah. deal. So trade shows, man, uh, are a, a big one. It, when one comes to town, you know, go. go. Right, and they're generally in Chicago and uh, New Jersey or New York, yeah, Orlando, yeah, California, California, yeah, Houston, uh, probably, yeah, yep. Yeah. But there's actually a lot. Those are the big there's ones. A lot of really small ones. Small ones. We have one in Minneapolis that happens two times a year. Yeah, there's like a tour. Uh, Dirk was in here yesterday yeah, talking yeah, about the tour he's going on. So mm -hmm. there's the small ones and the local frag club ones. Find your club, no local. You like. You know, there's two ways. I, one, I can go to somebody's house and wheel and deal there at a club meeting. Yep. But two, they usually have twice a year or at least a mm. couple times a year a, you know, frag meeting. And generally it's the same thing. It's I cut clippings out of my tank and I'm like, most five, of it's like, five pay, bucks. it's usually Here, pay man. it forward. Yeah, yeah. Isn't, and that's, that's why I, I, we really need to get back to that. Like go as, find fellow reefers in your community and just help each other out. It's like, like it, uh, uh, um, David Greger, he would grow the coral. And the only thing that he was trying to recoup from uh, growing the coral uh, was the cost of maintaining his systems. Mm. So he, like, he wouldn't charge more for any of the corals, and he had hundreds of them bring to these shows, yeah. and, or the club meetings. And the goal was just to help him make sure buy that salt, he could water, buy salt, and whatever, and then also share these animals with other people. Mm. And like, you're the coolest dude I ever met. You know? <laughs> Uh, you know, now it's like turned into this uh, profit center all the time. Yeah. And, you know, there's a place for both. There's a place for both. But, yeah, so if you want to get it cheaper, that, that is definitely one of them. Uh, you can also, like, trade with local stores, like you said. Yeah. But you don't know if you don't ask. I used to do that all the time. I, I yeah. like my buddy and I would uh, haul frags to Kansas City, uh, over a thousand some frags, turn them into the store pick a few pieces that they had we didn't have, uh, then we just trade them, and then we get store credit for the rest. If, if you're looking for even Steven, that's not a business. No. Like, so if you go, like, I want to give you one plague plug for your plague plug, they're going to have to no, they're, yeah. But if you're like, hey, dude, I will give you I've got 10 50 of, of these, my little Pacillopora things that yeah. are growing faster than uh, no, for give one of those. Give me that sliver of acro. Yeah, they're in. <laughs> and, and, like, I should say all the smart ones are in. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, but... Uh, Some don't. Yeah. yeah. But it's worth asking. One in your city will do this. Yeah. Right, yep. uh, if not more. So uh, there you go. Uh, so also, ask your communities. So ask BRS TV, uh, your clubs, and all those other places about trading. You know mm -hmm. where it's now free. You're just trading the stuff you're growing. And eventually, like you're growing more than you could ever possibly maintain in your tank. Yep. Right. Yep. All right. So those are really the ways uh, to, to figure out livestock. All right, I got two more, and then you got to get your phone out. Oh yeah, right, we got a special thing for you coming up. Yeah, right. you guys better, uh, you guys better hang in. Okay, something big is happening. All right, I think that we also just need to, uh, in terms of make it cheaper, embrace that most popular pets also cost fifteen thousand mm. over the course of their whole lifetime. Well, Vet bills, uh, all the other stuff, mm. getting fixed, food, you know. I mean, you could do this poorly, and I, I kind of equate this to doing it poorly, like in two thousand four with reef tanks. I could get a puppy. Just let him get covered in fleas. Uh, never give him his heartworm medicine. Uh, I could feed him the cheapest possible food that I could find. Yep. Uh, and, and then only really half as much as he needs. And uh, yeah, I could make this cheap. Yeah, but is it going to last as long? But the reason that I don't think about my puppy costing 15000 is because it's actually covered over 15 years. And the fact that the puppy brings so much joy to me uh, and companionship and I enjoy it so much, I would never even dream of thinking about what it cost for me to get that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. So in, embrace that. Uh, but as part of that, again, remember, you don't need all of this day one. You didn't get it with a puppy either, man. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I, uh, then my last one, actually, we already covered, is buy used from people who, uh, and, oh, buy used from the people who, <laughs> this is great, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best advice. Buy used gear from the people who don't listen to the advice we just gave today and failed. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So all the people that failed and that got was some the, of the garage. That's my, that was the point of my argument right there. 
I got heated make sure for you a look, second. Make, make sure you look for clean stuff while you're at it. Are you we guys, got something cool today? Are you guys ready for this? All right, hit the button. Are you ready right yeah, now? Hit, hit the button right, All right. now. All right. I'm about to do something. You guys are going to find out what it is. I just sent it. Boom. All right. If you're looking for ways to make this hobby cheaper, <laughs> And you're subscribed to the BRS channel with the little bell thing hit. Notification. You just got a notification of how to make it cheaper. If, right? you're, if you don't have the notification bell in your subscription feed, you just found out a way to get it cheaper. All right. Dave? And, all right, Dave, shoot this thing over here. If you want to find out how to get some stuff cheaper, you can follow. 24 Go hours. You only got 24 hours to figure this out. Hit that community tab on our channel. Uh, and you will see 24 hours how to get reefing good cheaper. Hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Yep. We'll see you next week.